Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall, mediator between this world of reality and the other world of illusion, although, admittedly, few of us can keep them straight. The road to hell, they say, is paved with good intentions. And uh, you might justifiably ask, how does this happen? Well, the first building blocks are honest and square. But as you travel downward, the light becomes dimmer and the way narrower. And before you know it, that fine line between good and evil is lost in the darkness. And although you begin by reaching for a star, you end up by falling into the pit. Our mystery drama, Party Girl, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Mason Adams. It is sponsored in part by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser, and your Singer Sewing Center. I'll be back shortly with Act One. about to meet two beautiful people. Let us consider the gentleman first. He's just past 35. He's handsome. He's intelligent. He's rich. He's destined to go far. Or so it seems. The young lady is in her 20s. She is slender, blonde, pretty. Indeed, a fit companion for the gentleman. I'm sorry to say that both these people are just slightly inebriated. They are at the gentleman's summer home, actually in his den. He is a sporting gentleman. He has invited her here to look at his spectacular collection of firearms. And why not? Don't artistic gentlemen invite ladies to look at their etching? Well, yes. But who ever heard of anyone being killed by an etching? <laughs> I don't know the first thing about guns. But I bet I recognize the prize. You sure did, Suki. That's a Belgian 29 caliber Armand de Vizier. Oh, Armand who? Hey, uh, why did they call you Suki? Oh, this little revolver is so pretty. I don't know anything about guns, but this is so pretty. Uh, 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 Suki, don't, don't point it, for goodness sake. <laughs> Even if it isn't loaded, you should never point it. Like a beautiful piece of machinery. Hey, you didn't tell me why your name is Suki. Oh, my father called me Suki. Well, is, is that so? Uh, why? Well, he had two daughters. He called one Polly, so he could tell her to put the kettle on. And he named me Suki, so he could tell me to take it off. <laughs> <laughs> you're, uh, you're you're joking, huh? <laughs> oh, Papa. Poor Papa. If he could see what's happened with little Suki, it'll break his heart. Oh, don't say that. You're a great little girl. Papa, I'm sorry. Really, I'm sorry. You know what I think... I think you need a drink. Yeah, that's right. I do need a drink. I I never used to drink. Oh, what am I hanging around here for? Oh, the evening's young. We're going to have a lot of laughs. I mean, what am I hanging around on this earth for? Oh, you're a profound one. What am I hanging around on this earth for? I mean it, Billy. <laughs> Is that your name? Go. Billy? Well, go on. Let, 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 let's join the others. You'll feel better. No. Thank you. Billy, you're awful cute. Mm. But I shouldn't hang around. You know what Papa said? When you wear out your welcome, go. Come on, Suki. The night hasn't even started. I'm not welcome in this world anymore. I think I'll leave. And this Armo, whatever its name is. Uh, 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 don't, don't do that, <laughs> Suki. You shouldn't, even in a joke. Life, Suki, life is, is so... Precious, you shouldn't just make jokes. Bye, Billy. No, there's no use pointing it at yourself, Sophie. It, it, it isn't loaded. It... There, you see? Well, if at first you don't succeed, try again. <laughs> I, I told you. Now, no, put the gun da, da, uh, down. And again? Now, look, Suki, would you, would you put that down before I take it away from you? And again? Suki. And again? Ah! Suki! Suki! Billy, Billy, was, was that a... Oh, my God, yes, it was. She's dead, Jim. She's dead. Look at her. She's dead. 
How did it happen, Billy? She was... She, oh, oh, she was fooling with a gun, and, and, and it went off. Just, just like that, Jimmy. You've got to believe me. I want to believe you. I want to believe you in the worst way. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I think she was she was depressed. She she really thought she wanted to kill herself. Why? Well, how would I know why? This was the first time I ever met her. <laughs> Jimmy, we're, we're going to have to call the police. Uh, just, no, 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 no. Listen, no, no. Just sit. Just sit for a minute. What else can we do? Wish. Now, you... You know what happens if we call the police. Well, what do you mean, if we call the police? Suppress the media. They'll be all over this thing like a swarm of locusts. But we, we have to call the police, don't we? You see, uh, uh, Billy, look, what everyone will want to know is, what was she doing here? Oh. Now, we've got to think about this from every angle. Oh, Jim, Jim, what are we going to do? Uh, all right, okay, now, uh, the, the first thing we have to do is to be calm. Calm! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. what time is it now? It's 8 o'clock. Now, uh, uh, oh, you're going to have to come down with a headache. A very bad headache. Oh, Lord, I have got a headache. All right, now, I'll get rid of everybody at the party. No, 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 Jim, we have to call the police. I know, I know. You keep saying that. You but have they, to keep saying that. They all will know that she was here, Jim. No. Nobody knows her. Nobody has seen her. Now, the two of you got here early, and, and uh... And uh, you, uh, you hadn't made your grand appearance yet. Uh, we're covered on that score. Now, what do you mean, covered? Billy? Billy, just let me handle everything. Now, don't you move out of this room. Don't you show your face. Eight, eight o'clock. Uh, we, uh, we can't make it too abrupt. We'll have to let the, let the party run for a couple of hours. Jim, the, Jim. And once we get everybody out of the house, we... What are you doing? Hi there. Hey, how's it coming? Everybody having enough to eat and drink? Ah, hey, great. Is uh, Arthur around? Yeah, please. Jim. <laughs> Artie. Artie, you've got to come to the den this minute. We have got problems. Who's that? Now, who would it be? Oh. Uh, Billy. Artie took care of everything. Now, first he got everybody out of the house. Diplomatically and tax... Uh, Jim, I've been thinking you about... don't have to think anymore. All you have to do is forget. Oh, yeah, yeah. Forget. Well, we got everybody out by 10.30. And then when we were all alone, we arranged the other thing. Jim, don't use weasel words to cover up. Say what you did. You got rid of the body, right? We drove her car back to town. We parked it in front of her apartment building. And the police will find her in the front seat. Oh, Jim, Jim, this is wrong. Uh, in, in, in politics, you see, right and wrong become a matter of time and place. Uh, the police will think she was robbed and murdered, and, well, that, that'll be the end of the matter. The end of the matter. What could we have done? She, she was a foolish girl. It wasn't your fault. It was my fault. Every gun in the collection, I, I'm so careful to make sure that they're empty. But there was a live round in one of the chambers of the Armand de Vizier. All right, but she was a girl who wanted to kill herself. What I'm not facing up to is... is the other thing. What other thing? Why did I bring her here in the first place? Oh, you know why. You needed her. And, and, and all the others, because you and Cecily are finished. Well, then why don't I divorce Cecily? Because if you do, the career is finished. Oh, the career. It's all the career now, isn't it? Isn't it? It's... it's it's not even my career. It's the career. It belongs to all of us. Look, the way we work for you, the way we just we, we just put everything out on the line. Yeah, sure. Billy, please. Oh, please, don't throw yourself and all of us away. Will you... Just let me think for a while, Jim. Just let me think. <laughs> Here we had a homicide last night. You uh, got the report, Ben? You're out, Captain. 25. Name of Suki Prentice. The model. Was, uh, was she a model or are you being kind to her? She was found sitting behind the driver's seat in her car, a blue two-door Alliance sedan, mm -hmm. which was parked in front of her apartment building at 334 West Palmer. Shot once in the right temple. 29 caliber bullet. 29 caliber. Hmm. Funny caliber. I wouldn't use the word funny, but I agree. Time of death set at 8 p.m. Body discovered by foot patrolman at 12.18 a.m. Anybody hear anything? Nope. And nobody saw anything. It's a very quiet residential neighborhood. Moody? 
Apparent motive, robbery. Purse was lying beside her, open and empty. No money inside. Markings on fingers and wrists show evidence of her having worn jewelry. Yeah, so it was robbery. Well, why do you say apparent motive? How does this one look to you, Captain? Well, I think the report says it. She pulled up in front of her house. Some hood happens by and sticks her up. Maybe she panics or uh, maybe he's a psycho and he kills her. Mm, but you don't think so, I can tell. All right, what bothers you? The report says she slumped behind the wheel of the car. But the bullet wound is in the right temple. Mm-hmm. Now, it should be in the left temple. What did the killer do? Reach all the way around inside? Well, maybe uh, maybe she turned her head. Oh, she'd have to be a contortionist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll spend a while on it. I don't know what you can do besides ring doorbells and ask if anyone saw something. <laughs> it could be a career in itself. Something else bothers me. Where was the cop on the beat? Hello there, Officer Malone. Hello, Sergeant. Malone, how are you as a ticket writer? Oh, depends on the mood I'm in, I guess. Some nights I ticket everything in sight. And then I have nights where I love all my fellow men. I forgive them the little traffic trespasses. And how were you last night? Ah, last night I was a lion raging through the street. Nothing, no one escaped my wrath. Right here in front of 334 West Palmer, the sign says no parking at any time. Oh, that is my favorite spot. I call it the quota corner. There's always someone breaking the law right here. Really? Well, you let someone get away with it last night. Oh, no. There was a convertible parked there between 7 and 10. And he got his. There couldn't have been a convertible parked in front of 334 between 7 and 10. What are you telling me? I know who I can. Because at 8 o'clock, a Miss Suki Prentice was shot to death there in her car. And she wasn't spotted till after midnight when your relief man took over. No, no. So the fact is, you didn't even walk this part of the beat for the four hours between 8 and 12. Now, a little bit of cooping on the beat might be okay, but you must have had yourself a slumber party. Sergeant Kravich, I put in a full eight hours. I patrol every square foot of that beach. Not only did you not ticket a car that was illegally parked, but you didn't even notice that a woman was slumped over the wheel dead. Now, you better listen to this, Sergeant. At 7 p.m., I'm in front of 334, okay? A blue NMC convertible is illegally parked. I ride him up. I pass by once an hour. He's still there at 8, at 9, at 10. At 11... He's gone, and the spot is empty. So I don't know anything about your two-door sedan with a dead dame in it. But that's impossible. Do you want to see my duplicates? Go on down to headquarters. I turned them in this morning. She wasn't killed in front of the house, Captain. She was killed somewhere else. Okay, Ben. That much is obvious. Well, then. This becomes another kind of crime. It's no longer some hood who spots a mark and moves in. It's something else. What? Well, it means it's a, it's a killing with a, with a, with a texture. Come on, Ben. Now, what are you trying to say? It has a story. It has complications. Somebody had to figure out certain moves. Okay. Why was her body brought back to her house? To get it away from the spot where she'd been shot. Far away. Because if we find out where she was killed, we know kill her. All right, then you get to work, Ben. I will, after lunch. (laughs) I never knew you'd stop for lunch when you were hot on the cake. Well, this is a very special lunch. An old college friend of mine is in town. Has a summer house upstate. Hey, how come you never got rich? Uh, He may be rich, but he's a great guy. You know him. Why would I know him? Well, you know of him. He's Congressman Bill Anderson, who's probably going to be the next governor of the state. that laid out for you. Bill Anderson and Benny Craddock, two boys who, through an accident of fate, became friends, and through another accident, will become adversaries. Perhaps unconscious adversaries would be more accurate. Well, you make sure you stay conscious, because I shall return in just a few moments with Act Two. Isn't it nice to know you're free? To hide you there to, to know you're all that you can be. In the 
free spirit department, Buick's mid-size 1976 century has a lot going for it. Efficient size, lots of room, neat things like that. But Century offers bonuses. It's a Buick, remember, which says one heck of a lot about how nicely it takes care of you. And Century does something for the sake of efficiency that no other American mid-sized car does. It comes with a V6 engine and a Buick V6 at that. Century, the spirit will move you. Now this word from WPIX-TV. When I started out, I'm sure there were an awful lot of men poking each other in the ribs, elbow pokers. You're listening to Pat Harper, anchor woman on the Channel 11 10 o'clock news. I think men are trying really hard to go along with everything that we're asking them to go along with, but I still think they're elbow pokers. Channel 11's Pat Harper, anchor woman, newswoman. But I've done hard news on the scene since 1962. Well, she wades in where normal people fear to tread. That's Joe Harper, anchor man on the Channel 11 10 o'clock news. I've got 28 years in the business. Without being braggadocious, I think Patty knows something about the business. Out of the studio, on the street, we talk about the business. We live and breathe it. It isn't just a job that ends when you're off the air. Joe Harper and Pat Harper. Anchorman and anchor woman on the Channel 11 News at 10 o'clock. Let's hear it from Martin Payne. We've got decorative lumber, lighting fixtures galore. We've got tiles and bulbs and brushes. We've got covering for the floor. Rollers, paints, and spackles, walls covering till you'll faint. Martin's Home Decorating Standards, it ain't just paint. Now through Tuesday, it's Martin's 50% off paint sale. Pay only half price for a special selection of Martin's inside and outside paint, fortune deck paints, enamels. All 50% off regular low prices. Buy Armstrong Place and Press tiles, now 33 cents each. All vinyl wall coverings in stock, second roll for $1. A four-foot utility shop light, complete with GE bulbs, now $12.99. We've got decorated lumber, lighting fixtures galore. We've got tiles and bulbs and brushes. We've got covering for the floor. Rollers, paints, and spackles, all covering till you faint. Martin's Home Decorating Centers, it ain't just paint. was a party girl, and uh, since a term like that can be defined in many ways, you can define it to suit yourself. She really didn't do anything spectacular when she was alive, but now that she's dead, she could just about set the world on fire for so many people. Oh, Ben, you haven't changed a bit. Neither of you, Cecily. <laughs> You're still a golden girl. The golden girl? <laughs> That was my private nickname for you. <laughs> and all the time, I thought you were my best friend. Now it can be told I was madly in love with Cecily. <laughs> were you? I was madly in love with both of you. And I decided I'd marry the one who asked me first. You know, I can't believe that the three of us are sitting here just the way it used to be so many years ago. Bill? Bill, I read this stuff that Ben wrote, and I think it is sensational. What's he talking about, Billy? Your master's thesis on crime, Ben. Who in his right mind would be interested in... Well, Ben, I invited you here on business. Well, few men folk are going to talk business. Ben, now that you know the way, don't be a stranger. Uh, Darling, uh, don't forget the concert tonight. Of course not. And uh, give the old man a kiss before you go. Mm. And it'll hold me for a while. See you soon, I hope, Ben. Now, what is this about business and my master's thesis? Ben, I want you to join me. Join you? Billy has got to be the logical candidate for Governor Penny. Now, he's the fresh, new, dynamic face the people demand. And I want you to do a position paper on crime for me. It's one of the biggest issues. You want me to do... you really have something to say. You don't yell, bash their skulls in. On the other hand, you don't insist they're all poor, misunderstood victims of society. Well, I'm flattered. Join me. Take a sabbatical from the department. (sighs) I'm tempted... But I just started a case. Well, couldn't someone else take it over? 
I wouldn't feel right. Why not? I may be wrong, but I have an idea that unless I push this case, it might get sloughed over. Mm. That tells us something about the police department, doesn't it? Oh, yes. Tells us we're undermanned, overworked, undertrained in things that really matter. So much clamors for attention. So many things keep happening. Well, what kind of case is it, then? A girl was found murdered last night. Oh? Just a girl. Her name was Suki Prentice. Uh, yes, I, I, I believe I heard it on the news this morning. Wasn't she, uh, killed by a hoodlum in front of her house? No, she was not killed in front of her house. She, she wasn't? She could have been. She was shot at 8 p.m. At that exact time, another car was parked in space. Oh? How, how do you know this, Ben? The cop on the beat had ticketed another car for being parked there illegally. Yeah. But then, then it's only one murder. Now, what, what Billy is asking you to do is to work on the big picture. I understand. But this girl's entitled to justice. <laughs> sure. But is it more important to uh, work on this one single solitary situation or to devote yourself to the entire system? The system is only as important as any individual. Well, Billy's offering you an opportunity to make an impact. This girl needs me. And I, I'm the only friend she has in the world. Well, what are you talking about? Did, did you know her? No, but she's dead. And she has become a problem. Everybody wants to be rid of her. She really wasn't very important. Actually, if you want to eliminate euphemisms, she was a prostitute. Why should she use up the money and manpower of the police force? Especially since we have very little real chance of cracking the case anyway. I think you've just stated the reason for dropping the case and coming to work with us, Ben. If we refuse to give this girl justice because it is awkward or difficult or more convenient to work on other things, then there is no justice. Somebody has to be on her side. Ben, I really need you. Now, I want to be a part of it, Billy. Just let me wind up this case. Mm. I want us to be in touch. Sure. Sure, we still want to be able to pick your brains, Ben. So, how about lunch on Friday? Huh? Yeah. yeah, if I'm not held up. What? It was good meeting you, Jim. Hmm? I'll see you, Billy. I think I can find my way out. Oh, Jim. Hold it. What are we going to do, Jim? Just just don't worry, Billy. We're taking care of it. Jim, I've got a conscience. And you've got to learn to live with it. No, I don't think I can live with this. There's the welfare of the whole state, Billy. You're the best qualified man. Now, are you going to throw it away for some? Dumb little hooker. Don't say that. Oh, come on. We've worked too long and too hard. You are a sensitive guy, and maybe... Maybe you need these moments to search your soul. But snap out of it. Let's move onward and upward. What do you mean you don't have the copy of the summons? The officer turned it in yesterday morning. He told me so. It has to be there. 7 p.m. the 19th. Yeah, in front of a no-parking sign at 334 West Palmer. That ticket has to be there. Well, let me know if it turns up. Hey, Ben. What did you... That summons Patrolman Malone made out for that car that was parked where Suki Prentice should have been. It's gone. It's disappeared. Well, it, uh, it may have been misfiled. No, it doesn't exist. I've been on the clerk's back for the last three hours. He's gone through every piece of paper now. Well, don't bother you. It has to bother me, Captain. It's part of the case. Uh, yeah, yeah, but it's not your case anymore. What are you talking about? You're off it. Since when? Since the uh, <clears throat> chief inspector said so this morning. Why? Well, I was going over manpower with him. You know, we have got to be more productive. Now, Sergeant Kravick on this party girl thing, he says, no, Ben's too much detective for that. You assign him to the Morrison murder. That thing's a month old. Besides, it's Maxwell's case. Yes, I know, but Maxwell has to go to the hospital for some surgery next week. Something's wrong. What? First, the parking summons. It's gone. Well, who says it's gone? The traffic clerk never saw it. Huh? Maybe it never existed. Malone says he wrote the ticket. Maybe he feels he had to say it. Are you accusing Malone of... Well, he's an old-timer. He's come up to retirement. Now, look, I know Malone. I like him. Yeah, so do I. But that night, he may have you shortened the beat. It was hot. He was tired. And then when he found out about the murder, he tried to cover himself. You know, made up a story about another parked car. I don't believe it. Yeah, it could have happened. Why am I being taken off? Now, do you want to tell the chief inspector how to run his division? Let me have a couple of more days. Ben, what has got you glued to this thing? 
She was young, good-looking, and expensive. The guy she was with must have killed her. Where's your evidence? Because only rich guys, rich and important guys, could afford her. Mm-hmm. It's all theory. And it could be the guy is rich and important enough to apply heat. Are you saying that he got to Inspector Dennison to take you off? Uh, it could have been a coincidence. And that traffic ticket could have been lost by accident. Or maybe it was never written in the first place. I got another lead I want to follow up. Let's just see if I run into coincidences there, too. How are things coming on the, uh, the murder case, Ben? I may have a break. She must have been out with some man that night, and he killed her. Is uh, that the latest police theory on the case? It's all I have to go on so far. Well, uh, what's your lead? <laughs> I didn't think you'd be interested in the grubby details of some tawdry little murder. Anyhow, I decided to work on this position paper for you at night. Oh, Ben, that is great. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what, what is this, uh... This lead that you have, Ben, I'm fascinated. Uh, well, an informer of mine, or to give him his proper name, a stool pigeon, is going to meet me at about 4 o'clock, at which time he should be able to tell me who arranged, shall we say, liaisons for Suki Prentice. I see. And that way, I'll know who Suki was with on the night she died. Now, about society's attitudes towards criminals... Uh, oh, look, uh, this is between you two eggheads. I have practical matters to arrange for. It's uh, good seeing you again, Benny. Sure, Jim. Now, what was I telling you, Billy? Yeah? Police. Police, I see, police, yeah. What's your name? Jojo, what can I do for you? Jojo, I'm looking for Big Margie. She ain't here. Now, where would I find her? How would I know? Where did you last see her? I don't remember. Remember a girl named Suki Prentice? Never heard of her. She's never been in this apartment? No, sir, never. Do you know what being an accessory to a murder can buy? Oh, yes, sir. So let us make a fresh new beginning, Jojo. You knew Suki? Yeah, she'd come around. I mean, I mean Margie would uh, book jobs for us. And the night she died, did Margie arrange that one? Well, you'd have to ask Margie. Where's Margie? Well, Jojo... You tell me, or you'll talk down at headquarters. Uh, what is it now, five o'clock? Well, maybe about uh, half past one. The bell rings, a couple of guys come in, very well-dressed guys, and I figure there are a couple of Johns, you see what I mean? And I, I don't pay them no attention. So? So I'm watching the ball game on TV, and they're talking to Margie, and I hear her say, all that money. And then she comes up to see me, and she says, I'm going away for a while, here's a couple of bills to keep you out of trouble. And she tosses me... Five hundred bucks. <laughs> and then she packs. I mean, she loads up them suitcases like she's really moving on, and off they go. Did you ask her where? Sure. I says, where you going? And she says, if I told you, you'd know something. These men, did she seem to go with them willingly? Oh, yeah. There was laughing and everything. And when did she say she was coming back? Hey, you want to know something? I don't think she's ever coming back. <laughs> I said all I needed was one more coincidence, Captain, and I got it. I get a line to somebody who knows where Suki Prentice went that night, and that somebody disappears three hours before I get there. Well, that doesn't have to mean anything. This big Margie, she was bought off. There's heat there. There is real heat. Uh, look, uh, Ben, you've got to take over for Maxwell right away. Now, I told the inspector I'd give you a few more days, and this, and he blew his lid. I'm staying on the case. Ben, you can't disobey a direct order from upstairs. Captain, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to leak it to the press. What are you saying? Why is the department soft-peddling the Suki Prentice killing? Ben, who's turning on the heat? You can't prove anything. I don't have to. I'll just let the press run with it. You won't do yourself any good. Look, if I were out to do myself that kind of good, I wouldn't be a cop. Well, okay. Take another day or two. <laughs> I'll hold the wolves off somehow. <laughs> Ben, I've turned some of your material over to my speechwriters. They say it is sensational. Glad I can help out, Billy. <laughs> you deserve recognition. Recognition. But paralyzed the many people. You become part of an establishment. Well, I've got to run. Hey, stick around. We'll have a few laughs. Like old times. <laughs> Not the same guy to laugh. Sure. Sure. Yeah. What? How, how about Cecily? Ah, that. That's all over. We just maintain the appearance. 
What? You and Cecily? Oh, no, I can't believe it. I... I don't want to believe it. Poor Ben. Eternal romantic. You and I and Cecily. You know, we are not college sophomores any longer. Oh, no, I guess not. I'll see you. What's your hurry? I've worked to do on that Suki Prentice killing. I... I thought you said you were taking off that. Hey, wait a minute. You can help me, Billy. Help you? Yeah, maybe you can lead me straight to the killer. And he could do it, too. Well, not to the killer, exactly, because we know it wasn't a murder. But certainly to the heart of the problem... Obviously, Billy Anderson is going to be kept in suspense. And, hopefully, you will be too. Until I return in just a few moments with Act Three. Right now, save on a singer machine with Slip and Sew. Slip and Sew, the two-way sewing surface singer invented, makes it easy for you to sew necklines, collars, and sleeves. Get this singer machine with its handsome cabinet now and save one hundred dollars off the regular price. There's no place like Sherry's New York, a city of elegance. If J.P. Morgan wanted to dine in the style to which he was accustomed, he'd go to Mr. Louis Sherry's celebrated restaurant. Good evening, sir. The highlight of dinner at Sherry's was the ice cream dessert. Louis Sherry's ice cream still has that old-fashioned flavor, yet none of today's additives. It's made only from real cream, milk, pure cane sugar, egg yolks, natural flavor, no artificial anything. You'll see that we haven't lost our taste for old-fashioned elegance. Mr. Louis Sherry's The Natural Flavor in the 1970s. Here's Ralph Flinger, better known as Mr. I Know Where They Are. Ralph, whatever became of Edwin Laudy, the inventor of the bridge lamp? Oh, yes. Yeah. So he's well in his 90s now, but he still works every day taking chain link fences apart. A listener would like to know whatever became of a young daredevil named Warner Bromley, who flew a Zeppelin upside down. Ah, uh, yes. He once tried to fly a Zeppelin upside down through the framework of the Eiffel Tower. What's he doing now? He inflates weather balloons for the government. All right, Mr. I know where they are. How about Stuffy Hodgson, Calvin Hoogevin, Jimmy Schwab, Fred Falvey, and Mary Backstage? Oh, they're all to be found in the pages of the new Bob and Ray book, Right If You Get Work, along with Wally Ballou, Tippy the Wonder Dog, and many more fascinating characters. That's Right If You Get Work, the best of Bob and Ray, at your bookstore now. Incidentally, Edwin Lowdy claimed he invented the bridge lamp, but he didn't. Well, he's in his 90s now. I don't see any point in reopening that controversy. Right If You Get Work, the new book by Bob and Ray, is available now at Book and Department Stores, published by Random House. Tomorrow morning, listen to Rambling with Gambling, the program with all the degrees. There's Fahrenheit, Celsius, and there are some others, too. Dr. John Gambling here, inviting you to join me and the other doctor, Dr. Bob Harris, along with Peter Roberts, Jack Allen, Harry Hennessy, Henry Gladstone, Walter Spencer, George Meade, Fred Feldman, and the whole crew here in Studio 2 for our daily seminars over WOR Radio from 5 till 10 in the morning. Now, what courses would you like to take? We have music, news, sports, weather, traffic information, a little bit of alleged humor now and again, and just about everything else to start your morning right. That's Rambling with Gambling, daily, 5 till 10 in the morning, here at WOR Radio, the talk of New York. What is the basic difference between a lie and the truth? Well, there must be many, but a significant one would appear to be that a truth can stand firmly on its own. A lie needs constant support and nourishment. You can tell the truth and let it go at that, but a lie will continue to make demands of you for as long as both of you live. 
Ben, how could I possibly help you with this murder case? I should have thought of you at the very beginning. Me? Of course, Billy. You've always been interested in guns, haven't you? Yes. Sure. Now, this, this girl, Suki Prentice, she was killed by an unusual caliber bullet. She was? Yeah, a twenty-nine caliber. Twenty-nine? I told you it was unusual. Now, who would make a twenty-nine caliber handgun? Who... Have you ever heard of one? Uh, I'm not sure. It's uh, not your ordinary weapon, would you say so? Yes, I, I, I would say so. Uh, hey, B- Billy, I hope, I hope I'm not imposing. No, no. Go ahead, if I can help in any way. Now, here's what I know so far. I know that I've got a high-priced party girl. She must have been killed by the guy that she was with. An unusual caliber gun. Probably a custom-made weapon. Expensive, but so what? Her guy is rich. Yeah. You seem to see it so clearly. Well, he has to be very rich, very well-placed. I, I told you about all the heat I'm getting. Ah, I don't want to bother you or bore you with more of this. No, 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 no. no I'm, I'm fascinated. Uh, how do you plan to move ahead now? Well, I've got a request out for information. Who makes a twenty-nine caliber? And when I get the answer, I may be able to trace the gun. Oh, that's pretty smart. Yeah, it's just routine police work. Well, Billy, I'll see you. You sure you can't stay around, Ben? I can't get over it. Can't get over what? I can't get over you and Cecily. Uh, guess it's just one of those things. Oh, I can't be. I'm sure that the no, two no, of we're, you... we're happy, Ben. We found a way of life that suits us. Yeah. Yeah. Could you uh, finish the paper for me this week? Is uh, this the detective's room? Yes, sir. May I help you? My name's Mainwaring. Write that down for the record. M-A-I-N-W-A-R-I-N-G. Now, I'm here about that robbery. Oh, well, you want to see a man from the larceny squad. One of them should be inside. Oh, now, I'm sick of being tossed around from one office to another. You a detective? Yes, but I'm not the one you want. Now, don't hand me the old, this ain't my table routine. My place was robbed the other night. The cop on the beat comes in, takes out his pad, writes something down. I don't know what. And that's the last I hear. Now, what happens now? The larceny squad will handle it. Come back after lunch. I can be put out of business. The law says I have to keep a record of every gun I sell. Oh, what am I blowing off steam at you for? Just steer me toward the right place. Wait a sec. Do you sell guns? T- tell me about it. Well, what do I want to waste my time with you for? You just said you're not the right detective. Oh, but maybe I can help you. That's crazy. I got the most exclusive gun shop in the country. I sell mostly to connoisseurs, collectors. Who else can afford me? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, the other night, my place gets broken into. All the guy does is bust open my safe, where all I got is maybe a couple of hundred dollars. And my record book. And that's all he takes. That's all? All around him is maybe a half a million dollars worth of handguns. I mean, I got merchandise there. Lugers, Dumont, Ferrands. None of your commercial junk. Every weapon is custom made. And all of this is untouched? All he takes is the couple of dollars and my record book. The book the law says I have to keep on who buys what. Well, now, why would anyone want to steal that book? It beats me. You know what I got in that shop? I got the most expensive revolver ever made. The twenty-nine caliber Armand de Vizier. The what caliber? I'm the only shop in the United States where you can buy it. What caliber? 29. It's a collector's item. You have a record of the people who bought it? That's what I'm trying to tell you. The record is gone. And that's why I can be in a jam. Think. You don't sell such a gun every day. I don't sell one every year. Can you remember any of the people who bought them? I uh, must have sold three, all told. A guy named Humboldt, who died some years ago... A guy named uh, Witherspoon, his yacht sunk in the middle of the ocean with all hands. So I guess the gun went with him. And the third, uh, to a dame. A dame? Yeah, a dame. I remember her. She came in, she said she wanted to buy her husband a birthday gift. He was a gun collector. And so, what can you give to the man who's got everything? And I said, a twenty-nine caliber Armand de Vizier. And she said, wrap it up. Do you... Do you re- recall her name? A good-looking dame, youngish, and uh, she had a kind of everyday name. Uh, Smith, Brown, Jones. Um, Thompson? No, not Thompson. But that's close. It ended in a son. Wilson, Watson? No. Go higher up in the alphabet. Johnson? No, but it's Scandinavian. Carlson, Benson? Anderson. 
Anderson? I'm going to have to put together my whole list like that. Hey, Detective, are you okay? Yeah, I'm, I'm just fine. Ian. May I come in, Cecily? Of course. You're really tied up with Jim or Artie or somebody. I wanted to see you. Me? You didn't know. I guess I didn't know till just now. You're the great detective, too. Cecily, I want to ask you something. I don't know the answer. That's a simple question. No, it isn't. I don't know what happened to us. Maybe Billy became too famous too quickly. Maybe he's not the same Billy. Maybe I'm not the same Cecily. Did you ever buy Billy a gun for his birthday? Did I ever buy Billy a gun for his birthday? Why do you ask? Did you? Yes. Do you know why? I thought it would save the marriage. Imagine. A revolver. An instrument of death to keep a marriage. Billy, the things that interested him were also of interest to me. So we could discuss them intelligently. Would you remember what kind of gun you bought him? Would I remember? Oh, it was a custom-made 29 caliber Armand de Vissier. That's fine. Cecily! Cecily! Billy, really, what's the matter? Cecily, you mustn't say another word. Why? Let me tell you why. Don't listen to him. You both have to listen to me. Because you both have a decision to make. A girl named Suki Prentice was murdered some days ago. Oh, I think I read something about it. looked like a robbery. I went to work on it. And I was stymied at every step. Evidence disappeared. Witnesses vanished. But why? It was as if someone very rich, very powerful, with connections everywhere, was applying heat against me. I was even taken off the case. Although that could have been a coincidence. But what does all this have to do with Billy and me? Billy killed her. What? You see, I had discussed the case with Billy. And every time I mentioned a lead, that lead disappeared. Ben, are you sure you're all right? Don't look at me. Look at Billy. Ask Billy here if he's all right. I, I don't understand. You have accused Billy of murder. Where is your evidence, your proof? I don't have any. Dan, this is monstrous. You, our dear friend, the oldest friend we have. Is this what politics can do? Have you been bought off? As of this moment, nothing exists to tie Billy into it. But how long can it last? Now, so far, Billy, you bribed somebody to try. Billy, are you just going to stand there and... You the... paid off Big Margie. But it got a little more serious with Mainwaring. That called for burglary. Mainwaring. That's what I bought. Uh, you'll have to tell her to deny that. Cecily, are you willing to perjure yourself for Billy? What does that gun I bought have to do... It's the gun that killed Suki Prentice. Oh, I don't believe it. Why don't we find out? Have the gun examined at the police ballistic lab. Or did you get rid of the gun by this time, Billy? Ask him, Cecily. The beautiful 29 caliber Armand de Vissier. Ask him if he still has it. What are you going to tell her, Billy? It's been lost? Stolen? No proof. Ever had such a gun? That really isn't the answer you wanted to hear, is it, Cecily? You didn't ever buy me such a gun. Did you, Cecily? Did you, Cecily? No. I could expect you to do nothing less, Cecily. You love him. But she's the least of your problems, Billy. You bribed somebody a traffic. He's a rotten apple in the barrel. How do you know he won't start becoming more curious? He, he, he doesn't know anything. How about Big Margie? She knows everything. Why should she stay bought? You lay golden eggs. What she knows is worth millions. Or how do you know she won't get loaded one night and shoot her mouth off? Billy! Billy, don't lose your cool. There is no evidence. And now the party's complete. Here's good, true, and faithful Jim. You can't prove a word of this. From now on, Jim will take care of everything. Your hands will never be dirty, Billy. 
Jim has already gone from bribery to burglary. He can also arrange for murder. And it's all being done for you. <laughs> Did King Henry II kill Beckett? No. He only said, who will rid me of this meddlesome priest? All of you have enough Jims and Artie. Ben, listen. I tell you, you are in the clear. Ben, believe me. What do you want me to believe? I didn't kill her. It's a lie. It's the truth. She killed herself. Really? She was... She was down, you know? And do you realize what you are saying, Billy? Yes. Yes, Jim, I'm sorry. Now, maybe her life was getting a little too much for her, but somehow I left a live round in the chamber and... And... And she pulled the trigger. That's the way it happened. Yeah. Ben... Then what good will it do to expose this? Don't you understand? The state needs him. He is the best man. He was a week ago. But he's losing ground every day. Aren't you, Billy? Yes. You want to get out now, Billy, before you have to get in deeper? Will you... Will you come with me, Cecily? Yes. Why don't the three of us go downtown? You... You... You're crazy. That's right, Jim. He is. But you have to be crazy. How else can you hope to save your soul? Well, as you might imagine, Bill Anderson retired from public life. There were people who admired him for coming forward. There were people who thought he was stupid for sticking his neck out when he could have gotten away with it. There were those who condemned him for being an uh, an adulterer and those who praised him for not being a hypocrite. What does it prove? You can't please everybody. But I'll be back with some news that should please almost everybody in just a few moments. say history is shaped by inexorable forces that grind their relentless way, despite our best efforts to shape them. There are those who say history is made by unpredictable, random accidents. Suki Prentice, a young lady of the night, she may have changed history. Nothing changes here, though. Seven times each week, we bring you the best in mystery terror, suspense, and the macabre. Our cast included Mason Adams, Russell Horton, E.V. Juster, Earl Hammond, and Dan Ocko. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant... Dreams?